So what I'm going to do actually, I can't, I need to make this campus first. Um, I need to make this campus first. I'm going to reload the turn. I'm going to reload, reload the turn. I hate that. Um, but I made a mistake with uh, a decision here. And it wasn't a combat mistake. You know, I'm not going to reload to save units or stuff like that, but <clears throat> I should not have built this city yet. I should have sent that city over here. Um, this kind of thing where I don't fulfill a plan that I already planned. Uh, I don't mind reloading. You know, we're human. We make mistakes. Sometimes we click the wrong thing. Sometimes we forget the thing we planned to do. And in a game of civilization, that can just be devastating. So uh, honestly, I recommend you just keep some autosaves. You'll notice I keep 10 autosaves at the ready. So if I need to back up a little bit, say I realize, oh my gosh, I forgot to start, you know, mausoleum and it's crucial to my build. You know, maybe you're playing Gaul. Um, it's okay to go back a few turns and change your game plan a little bit to fit what your original game plan was. <clears throat> I think what people largely will complain about um, and what you know, I try to avoid myself, uh, is saves coming to win combats. That is really not good. Um, it is, there is a little bit of RNG involved in how much damage you do. So, um, for example, that guy dying was a roll. Um, it was a percentage chance, most likely, uh, to have some amount of extra damage added on. And you'll notice that the damage even with the same attack against the same unit at the same health, um, is not always going to do the same amount of damage. So um, power for power, there is a little bit of RNG built in there, and I think resetting for that reason is, I guess, working against an intended gameplay mechanic. And working against intended gameplay mechanics, I can see you know, there being a sort of complaint about that, like, uh, you know, it's not in the spirit of the game. But, uh, you know, I think resetting to the same turn to make a, uh, a better version of a similar choice, um, especially a non-combat choice, is good. Um, <clears throat> but even, say, if I, uh, I've had times where I accidentally, oh, maybe this will erupt this time? It did not. Um, but I've had times where I accidentally moved a unit that I did not think I was controlling, for example. Um, that can be devastating if you accidentally move something. Um, so these kinds of things I don't mind resetting for. So I don't remember at all what I did this turn. I think I got very aggressive. So if I recall correctly, I did something along this line of knocking that guy out and moving this one forward. I may have attacked here. I think that's actually what I did. Um, maybe that was in the other order because this is now a little bit vulnerable, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world that that slot is available. Um, especially in this situation. In fact, we could even move out here so we can get that there. Uh, yeah, just protecting that farm. We want to make sure that this guy doesn't get a free heal. Um, that will make these men at arms so tough to deal with. That's why I've been very focused on protecting these two tiles out of all the tiles in my empire. These two are two of the ones that I just cannot lose because they represent a half of a man at arms for Canada. Let's see, so that's an entire unit that I am denying them, essentially. I'm going to move a little bit here. I think this is similar to the play that I made before. I want to just, you know, keep with the decisions that were made. Did I? I feel like I attacked this with something, but I don't remember what. Is it this? That seems right. A little bit unfortunate, unfortunate on uh, the positioning of this man at arms. I can't really get it into combat anywhere, and I am not going to build this city yet. I'm going to build, I think, this this city over here. Uh, this city, yes, because I have to put down, uh, have to put down this first. Otherwise, I will not be able to place it because you can't have a city place a district down next to the city center of another city, but you can place a city center down next to a district built by another city. So it's the order there is crucial. Let's 
Okay, and here we see that man of arms. Finally, almost through this turn, I'm going to move this down to Sparta, and we'll be off to the races here. Oh, I can build a district here. I wonder what I should build. Um, we do want walls and a granary. Uh, let's see. Well, we could get a holy site in, but that would squash this incredible tile, and I really don't want to do that for just four faith. Uh, same with uh, a campus, although that's a good spot for a campus. It's, it is next to a volcano, though, and I would rather not if I don't have to. So I wonder, do we have a preserve location somewhere? Uh, also next to the volcano. Um, let's check the appeal lens. If you're not familiar with these lenses, they are wonderful. Um, and you can see, actually, wow, there are some very good places for, um, for preserves around here. Um, any of these light green regions, when you place a preserve adjacent to them, these light green or dark green regions, they will generate science. Um, and will give the uh, and if you place the preserve on a dark green location, it will generate appeal. Or sorry, not appeal. Uh, it will generate even more science. Yes. Um, so and it, additionally, the reason that it gives you science is because these charming tiles will be upgraded. Um, oh well, I guess they wouldn't be upgraded to breathtaking. They would need to get up to four. Hmm, it has to be three or better. So some of these would be upgraded to charming, and some would not. Um, interesting, so these two are charming, and this is breathtaking. Um, what about this? Is this plus three? That's a, that's a two appeal. Two appeal, two appeal. Hmm. So we're not finding anything too incredible like what we have up there. Um, one, two, three. So this is a pretty good spot. That's a three appeal. That's three appeal. So that would be very good. We would be able to get four, five, six, seven science out of this, although we do lack uh, this spot there. I think that's probably the best spot to put this. So let's go ahead. Uh, we can purchase these tiles and get that preserve slotted in to this plus three location. I think that's going to be the best spot. And then likewise, um, we'll be able to put a campus next to it. Um, so we can do something like uh, preserve, and then get put a campus here to get that plus two um, next to it. So that is very, very good. So here, normally this would have given one science, but by putting a campus here, it is giving us four. So that's effectively a plus three so campus there. A little bit diminished compared to what it would usually be. Um, but there is also, you could think of it maybe as a three and a half. Um, because for example, if we were to put, say, a, uh, a holy site here, as we likely will, you can see that jumps up to five. <clears throat> and we could even take this further, depending on how the game pans out. I could see something like a commercial hub going here, and maybe even another uh, another campus going next to this. Uh, something to that effect could even occur. Uh, but I don't have a city to put another campus there, and I don't have one planned, although I could feasibly put a city, say, here, um, or maybe here, to great success. So one of these two spots I'll probably take and develop that area a bit further. But for now, this is a perfectly good plan. So let's lock in this preserves cost. Um, go ahead and culture bomb all those adjacent tiles as soon as it finishes. Um, and we can actually, how are we doing on housing? Let's get housing in before we do the walls, because the production here is really, really good. Um, OK, and we'll go to next turn. The next turn. Okay. Uh, I am. Let's see, where is. Okay, uh, yeah. So give me just one moment, actually. Pay no mind to the bubbles, to the bubbles behind the curtain. Mubbles. Um, <clears throat> anyway, we have machinery. Hooray. Machinery is very good. 
Um, this is a big deal because we can, um, while I'm hovering over Kilwa at this moment, but <laughs> I was aiming <clears throat> for the siege tower. This is incredible. These walls that Canada just, just built and is still building, they're worthless. We're going to knock them right down. We're going to take over Canada. It's going to be glorious. <clears throat> Likewise, we just got crossbowmen, so we finally have a ranged unit that can do damage. Up until this point, we've just been dealing with the immortal, which, while they're <laughs> they're useful in their time window, that window is fairly short. And uh, fortunately, we've upgraded almost all of them out of immortals at this point. <clears throat> so, they're going to kick some butt. Um, skirmishers are also very useful. I'll probably build a couple of those and send those out across the world. So this is a major, major step for us. We're finally getting this key, key technology. Um, let's continue whooping up on Canada. Um, you can see they're still trying to move these catapults into position. And even though the men-at-arms are objectively stronger and um, do more damage, the catapults are still what I'm going to target because they're just annoying. They're in the way, and ranged units do free damage. They don't take retaliation. So you always want to try to knock those down very quickly. <clears throat> that way they don't get all that extra free damage on you. Let's see. So um, these catapults can hit those catapults. Get a little bit of experience there. Mm, this unit needs to step back. So we'll fortify until healed there. And, ah, oh, we can't quite get the kill. Can't quite get the kill, can we? Not with this unit either. That's very unfortunate. It's so close. But we don't have the damage to take it out. So that's, ah, oh, that's frustrating. I think this is probably good, though. Um, I just noticed that this guy is hurt. That's why I thought he was at full health when it was zoomed out. So this is probably fine, I think, because this will keep our men-at-arms defense. Oh, well, there's that RNG that I was talking about. There's proof of it. You can see it said we were not going to kill it, but we did. We got that little extra bump of bonus damage, and now I'm a little worried about this men-at-arms. It might be in danger. Let's uh, give some support here with this one and try to do some damage with this. Uh, that way... Uh, this unit will probably be targeted and not killed, and this unit will take that man-at-arms' attack quite nicely. <clears throat> Hopefully, they don't decide to throw themselves at this level 3-1. That would be very sad, because um, he is quite strong. Let's see. We can attack this. It's going to hurt, but I want to try to get a kill with my vampire. Um, and... These vampires do a lot of damage, but they can't quite take it down on their own. Um, hmm. I really wish I was able to do the blitz attack here. You know, I think what I can do, and I may be wrong here, but I think I can step back and then bring this one up. Oh, I can't attack. I was hoping I would be able to. Um, so in that case, I have to attack with my vampire to prevent this man at arms from going down to this attack. Now, um, I think this man at arms backs off and heals, which is not ideal. You really want to have that killer instinct when it comes to these fights. You can't let them get away um, at low health. You need to make sure to do things like block off their path uh, to prevent escape if you're going to leave an enemy at low health. So. I worry that this unit will step back, especially since Canada wants to surrender um, and go to sit in a city somewhere and defend it and make my life a little harder on that front. <clears throat> Better to just take it out. But at least we have this second vampire finally up and running. That's going to be really good. And we can upgrade this archer eventually um, into a crossbowman. That is going to be just great. Likewise, we've got another man-at-arms here, fully healed, finally. Um, and that is... Let's see, we don't care about Cardiff. Uh, so let's just get... Ooh, that's a very good... Do I have something about... That's interesting. Um, oh, yes. Cities not founded by Nader Shah receive plus two faith. 
plus three gold on domestic trade routes. I should really be abusing this. Um, so that is why I think we're getting plus three faith here. Because all these cities were not founded by me. That is absolutely incredible. Um, so let's definitely do that. Um, awesome. Also, Mashad is, it was founded by me, so I don't know why I'm getting the plus three faith there. Very strange. <clears throat> Maybe, did I not find found Sparta? I thought I founded Sparta. I'm a bit confused why my capital is giving me that bonus too. But uh, we'll, we'll run with it, it's fine. Uh, let's see, so where do I want to send this? So I want to set up a long trade route, probably up to Nidoros. Um, that way we have a very nice road that runs top to bottom and is uh, updated to the recent era. These internal trade routes are crucial. You need them to shuffle around units. Uh, they make a big difference in the long run. Also, just as a bonus, we're going to pass through Cardiff. So I think that gets us the quest um, when that happens. <clears throat> so this scout may die. I was hoping to find land somewhere, unless they, unless there's land over here. I think the scout is toast. But that's not too bad. Um, we cannot put these lumber mills in here yet. So let's go to this spot. Put lumber mills there. <clears throat> and we can't upgrade these yet because we don't have mathematics, but I'm going to keep pushing them forward. I had another set of spearmen somewhere. Ooh, and another archer. Good. And another archer. Very good. Let's... I see no reason to keep this archer down here. I don't think Byzantium is likely to attack anyone, especially not someone with uh, the largest army right now. Canada had the largest army until they foolishly attempted to attack me. <clears throat> oh, I forgot to upgrade my battering ram. Definitely got to do that. I don't know how much gold that costs. Oh, I can't see right now. Come on. Yikes. Yeah, that scout is in bad shape. If there's a single boat around here, it's, it is definitely toast. Okay, yes. All according to plan. This guy barely survives. Um, that actually is more damage than he should have taken. That's pretty wild. I think that's maybe one or two hit points. Um, seven. Yeah, that is definitely that RNG coming into play there. It's good that... Um, as much health as it did. Ah, there's the other spearman. <clears throat> Thought I had a second one around here. Um, and this is just the really nice thing about going to war early. Oh, it just fortified. Ha! That's wonderful. Okay, well, I think... Can we get this kill? Great. All right, so that vampire is now permanently stronger. Um... See, we have added a strength. It doesn't show up now. We get this base strength from uh, the, the whatever era it is. And then every time it kills a unit, uh, it has to be the killing blow. Every time it kills a unit, it gets plus one strength. Um, and there is a cap, I think, of plus 10 for barbarian units. So you, if you want that for that vampire to be strong, to be able to take down those killer death robots, uh, those giant death robots, you got to be using it throughout the game. you got to be at war. So I'm going to go ahead... And just, I'm going to take this over uh, right here. This is only power 39, so <clears throat> that's big, because if they are building walls here, then they no longer get to use that against me. Uh, and that was one of the main concerns I had, is that walls would come up in Toronto before I could capture this. So absolutely great. I don't even think they started building walls. I don't see walls coming up. Um, also, this is a really pretty area. Just something about that. I think especially when it's illuminated, it's going to look really nice, very really aesthetic. Um, let's turn off these. This game is just gorgeous sometimes. Um, one of the things I like about it. Let's see, so we'll fortify that guy. That may be foolish. Hopefully we don't lose someone, lose it to an attack from Victoria. There are still five turns there. Um, probably could have put that guy somewhere over there. Um, oh, good. Siege towers are cheap. That's fantastic. Um, and we can uh, potentially get a settler, I think, before the Golden Age ends. 
Um, what is that? Yeah. Right, I never made um, <clears throat> never made any scouts. I need to make a scout somewhere. I have all these production queues set up. Uh, let's see. Let's let's put a scout. Let's put a couple scouts actually. Two scouts here before this. Um, let's cancel these man at arms actually. We'll make two more of those. <clears throat> um, getting these skirmishers out and exploring the world is just it's very important. I think also, I don't know what I'm doing with this theater square right now. I need a galley here. The theater square is only a plus two at this time. The galley is going to make a big difference. I'm, I probably should even make a second galley um, before I get that barracks. Oops. Um, <clears throat> let's see, and Elsund has, it just has a lot of development to do before it can really get off the ground. This industrial zone it's going to come in before the harbor. Um, so we're not going to do the harbor first. We're going to do the industrial zone first to help build the harbor, um, because that's still 24 turns. But um, Elsund is growing fast and is eventually going to have just gobs and gobs of production. <clears throat> so, uh, right. So for the first time, I think we're moving a full health unit into Canada's territory. You can see here, we can just smash these cities with no walls. Uh, we have 69 strength, very nice, because there is, um, we have that urban warfare where attacking cities we get plus 10, crazy, crazy stuff. Um, that is one of the reasons I build these guys this way, is urban warfare is so good. Um, and likewise, <clears throat> I guess I can't this turn, but uh, theoretically, if there had been walls here, I can put this catapult there. Um, strike at the city with a little defensive bonus, which is great. Um, now, something to note is that when you fortify outside of your tiles, it heals you slower. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. Sometimes, if you're, say, way outside of your territory, like if I was way over here, um, it's probably worthwhile just to fortify in place. But in this case, when I'm just right there, um, it's always take that extra step and move before you fortify. Um, it's worth it because the one turn of plus five healing is made up on the very next turn when you get plus 10. Um, so, or rather plus 15. You get plus 10 plus an extra five. Um, so you get that back right away um, as though you had been getting only plus 10 standing on this tile. <coughs> so. It's just flat better if you are within one or two tiles uh, of your territory to move within it. I'm sorry, I say one or two tiles. One or two turns of movement is what I mean to say. Yeah, mathematically, it works out that way. A lot of the time. Let's see. So we have a builder here, and I need to... I'm going to harvest this so that we can eventually put that incredible plus seven um, industrial zone down for Nidoros. Um, that is going to be critical. In terms of our future, I'm planning on using this, <clears throat> this gigantic city uh, to probably produce uh, projects, like lots and lots of great person points. And uh, we're gonna need a big city for that, lots of production. There is no land here, so I think this scout has nowhere to go. Uh, and the AI is aware of its presence, so I, I, I feel bad, but I think our scout is toast. Um, what we'll do is just in case, I guess we have shipbuilding, um, but we don't, we need cartography, <laughs> which we are a long way from. Um, <clears throat> so what we need to do here, we get military tactics, we get stirrups, because we need these to close out the war. We do not build niter. We don't get niter because um, we do not want to have niter pop up under a place where we plan to put a district. Um, we don't finish castles, because we'll eventually get this boost. Um, and we instead start working on cartography. I think getting the dams unlocked 
that's going to be important to get to keep our costs low and make sure we're not spending too much on dams. Um, I mean, we don't want to start unlocking all this tech before we get our dam price locked in. Um, <clears throat> once we get that price locked in, then uh, you know, so that even getting this early on is not necessarily too much of a trade-off. Um, however, going for cartography after that, that is going to be pretty big. We could be getting um, into say gunpowder or banking banking and education especially, these two are uh, also a very big deal. So we're choosing cartography over education and banking, mostly just so that I can go across ocean tiles because I need to be able to get across these tiles and get some era score or I'm gonna be in a dark age um, and I need to do it. Uh, in fact, I may even get a dark age next time and I, I will need to explore uh, to get a heroic age. <clears throat> if I get a dark age, it's not the end of the world but I, I would definitely want to go for a heroic age. It's, it's very hard to recover um, if you go dark age, normal age, um, but dark age, heroic age is actually usually a good thing. Um, I wouldn't mind a dark age too much just because it would give me an opportunity to go for that heroic. We'll go ahead and sell this off. Love this mod. It tells me who wants to buy my stuff and who does not um, and what I can buy, in fact. Um, really good, so no one wants to sell me luxuries, for example. Um, <coughs> yeah, these guys don't like me, so I can't buy their luxuries. Um, this this that you see here, this is the Diplomacy Ribbon, but it uh, is has been improved by a mod called the Better Diplomacy Ribbon. This is probably... I think this might be my... If I were to give a mod that is the most essential to gameplay, I would say it is this one. Uh, it. It is purely visual. It doesn't affect the game in any way other than giving you access, easy access to information that you could have figured out anyway. If you wanted to sit here and turn the tile yields on and count every single one of these tiles and how much gold there would be and, and do the calculation of how much population they have and what buildings they have in their cities and what, what how many units they have and how much that, you could find out exactly that, that, it ha that they're making like, I don't know, roughly 30 to 50 gold a turn. You know, you would be able to know. So it isn't actually giving you really that much information. It's just making it so much more accessible. And you get a lot of this information anyway, but this mod does include some extra stuff. But for example, the number of cities that the different civilizations have. Um, it also crucially gives these little exclamation points that tell you when somebody has something you don't. Um, and likewise, it gives you this little trade deal thing. It tells you when you got a trade deal with somebody. So if you don't have this with one of your trading partners, why not? You know, you should be trading with them. You should be uh, trying to sell your stuff to them. You should be trying to buy their stuff because you don't have it. <clears throat> so these exclamation points are so useful. These little icons, so useful. Um, gotta love the Better Diplomacy ribbon. Really recommend that. Um, if you're only into visual mods that don't affect gameplay, I think that one is so, so, so recommended. And right behind it is this, uh, I forget what it's called, actually. This is a mod that Im improves trading. Um, could probably find it on the loading screen, or the saving screen, rather. Um, yeah, and this, it gives you, uh, tells you when people want to buy stuff or when people want to sell stuff. <coughs> Very helpful. Very helpful, in fact. So we are going into the next turn, and it's looking like we're going to crush Canada. I really don't <clears throat> know what they're going to do, which is glorious. I, uh, last night, or I guess maybe it was the night before, I don't recall, I was a bit worried that we were going we to lose this. Um, Canada had a big army, <clears throat> but uh, you know, that just goes to show that humans are a bit better at uh, the whole thinking and planning thing than the Civilization Six AI. I think it'd be really interesting to see, uh, like an actual, like an, a, an artificial intelligence be trained on Civilization games, playing games against itself and stuff. Uh, I, that would be fascinating. I, I wonder what sorts of strategies it would develop and um, how good it could become. I know I've seen games like uh, Real Time Strategy. Uh, even those games, AIs have become fairly proficient at, which is wild to even think about. Um, so I bet something like turn-based like this, where the AI can think so much faster than humans can, 
um, you know, they're able, it's able to process just because it's a computer, you know, thousands, millions, who knows how many things per second, um, depending on the processor speed. So uh, its ability to plan in this kind of a context, in theory, could be better than humans. You know, theoretically, an AI, a proper AI with enough time could figure out stuff about Civ and plan things that we could never really pick apart and figure out what exactly was going on. So I think very interesting that. Let's see. <clears throat> um, so we're going to smack into Toronto here. It's going to be a little slow at first because we don't have our, our, our units really in position. <clears throat> and we want to normally, uh, you want to surround a city to conquer it. But our units are like pretty badly damaged at this time. And uh, so what I'm going to do is just sort of slow roll it. I'm going to move this vampire out of the way because they're going to be healing for a long time. And we're going to slow roll it through here. It's okay that this is going to take a while. It's going to give our units um, some experience that is much needed. Uh, they really need those experience points. <coughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, also, we're going to finish this encampment uh, just to make sure that no random units can wander in while we are uh, whooping up on Canada. We don't want them to get any horses through, and if we have to fall back, we want to be able to fall back. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, do we still have... We do still have a movement point here. Um, let's actually fall back then. <laughs> mm. Mm. Well, where do I send this? Let's put a lumber mill there. And then we're just going to hide. Well, no, actually. Let's go into Greece. Let's go into Greece. I think there's still an archer here, but if we can get to Greece. Oh. Nice. I think this is this the new version? I think this is the new version. So that's pretty cool that we got another one of the uh the new Well, oh wow, he's way ahead of me. Who? Um, it's a lot of science, but they're broke. Interesting. Hmm. I don't think I want to tell them where I live. They they have decided not to like me. Minus twenty four here. It's another thing about the diplomacy ribbon. Um, and also note that even though they hate me, I was still able to send them a delegation because I just met them, and the turn hasn't ended. Fun fact, you can always get a delegation in on the first turn before they've formed their opinion of you. They will never give you a friendship on the first turn uh, before they form their opinion of you. And you can see these bubbles tell you what's going on. Blue is declared friend, um, red is denounced, yellow is neutral, and green is they like you, and they will accept a friendship. So the way that it works, if you're not familiar, is it's a, a bunch of modifiers of you know plus or minus, and they add up. And if you get plus ten, they'll be your friend. Um, if you get minus ten, or I think it's is it minus fifteen? I forget. Minus a lot, and they'll denounce you. Let's see. Okay, going into the next turn now. <coughs> uh, let's see. Grievances also will give you a lot of minuses. You can see. Um, well, I don't know why they've got that minus 21. Yeah, here we see grievances from other players against us. Minus 21. Ah, so there's Toronto's walls, but it's fine. We, we literally do not care. We've got siege towers. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, walls are irrelevant. Yeah, okay. Well, that's surprising that he hasn't denounced us yet. <coughs> Oh, 
Oh, crap. There are barbarians over there? Oh, crap. There are barbarians over there. Aw. Oh. Okay. Well, I guess um, I've got a little bit of a mission for these units. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I definitely should have sent that over with something. I didn't even look to see. Real stupid. Oh well. Um, but yeah, you can see we just absolutely smack. Um, and furthermore, we smack. And we are just breaking right into the city. It doesn't even matter, really, that it has walls. We probably should have swung the catapult first uh, and could have taken the city down. Um, oh, well, we can take the city anyway because of this level four. Let's go. Easy peasy. See, walls don't matter. Um, that's the power of the siege. Uh, let's see. Actually, before we keep this, let's take a look. Rebellion in 38, so uh, we can definitely hold this. Yep. Um, full loyalty in 17. So what are what is our loyalty ever like at this time? We want to get the monument and the granary going so that our loyalty goes up. Um, then we'll go ahead and repair the encampment. Um, we are at plus three. That's great. So now that the loyalty has changed a bit, let's see what's going on here. T plus 27, plus 11. So we're going to have a hard time doing loyalty flipping on these cities. I think we need to capture both of them around the same time, um, which is going to be tricky. So I, we may have some city flipping to deal with. Uh, where things are going independent and flipping back, we may have to take down the population of these cities a few times, but I think we'll really just have to knock down a few walls. Um, and that should be that. Now, I wonder how much do these siege towers cost to purchase? They cost quite a lot, um, so I would like to actually build one um, in front of these skirmishers. And honestly, maybe... Let's see, well, we need to get those out. Let's build a siege tower here also after, or rather, let's build it before the encampment since the encampment doesn't matter for the siege tower. That way we've just got a few, we want to keep extras just in case I screw up and <laughs> manage to lose one. Um, always a risk with the siege towers. So uh, gonna let these this vampire heal. Uh, it's important that those vampires are very strong, uh, because otherwise uh, they cannot get the kills that they need. So I always try to let them heal whenever possible. Um, nice, got that level 2 archer. Mm, I don't see any more woods. But I do see, let's see, what do we have in the way of tile improvements? So this would be a good spot for this. Um, oh, but I don't actually have that tile. Okay. So I'll just pin that. And let's see. Can't put a farm there. So I guess there. Let's put a farm there. Turn off those uh, yields and the tax here. Well, okay, if the tax will would kindly turn off. Why? Oh, it's because I have the, the tax menu open. There we go. Uh, um, so this scout, I think, is also dead because that is a quadrivering. Unfortunate. So, uh, yeah, we need boats. We need boats. Uh, we're going to harvest this. That way we get a little bit more production and we'll have room to put in that uh, industrial zone. It's going to be very good, very good to get that industrial zone down. Okay, okay, okay. Up over here, actually, just to the stream. Let me check the uh, stream quality. Make sure my voice sounds okay and stuff. Let's see. It's not. It's not. Oh, 
Uh-huh. Why, does, why is it saying that? Oh, it still says break time. Uh, why does, why oh, does no. It say that? <laughs> well. Hmm. Sorry. Didn't realize. This is why you gotta have your stream manager up, folks. Yeah? Dang. Well. I, I was looking at the chat, which was not happening. Nobody chatted. But, uh, I did not have the image pulled up. That's interesting. What can I do about that? I'll have to think about how I can have the, both the chat and the game on screen together. Perhaps there's a way I could do some kind of overlay. But I am a noob at this, you see. Um, so, yeah. I'm just fairly tech savvy, so this was this was my attempt at making something that appears normal. Um, ooh, they brought me my settler. How polite. Um, and never, never would have expected that. 